Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, and I'm excited that you're here with me today to learn my 10 tips to look younger with makeup. Yes, we can take years off by using the right makeup. And this is part of a collab that I'm doing with Annie P of Makeup and More. If you don't know Annie, you need to go to her channel and I've linked it below. She is a retired cosmetologist, so she knows everything about hair and she's extremely knowledgeable about makeup. And she actually posts five days a week. So when you go to her channel, you're not just learning information, although you learn a lot of that, you're really learning a lot about who Annie is as a person. She's very kind and open-hearted and very vulnerable. And she really shares a lot about herself and whenever I just need a good kind of friend injection, I go and watch Annie P because I don't know, there's just something very comfortable about someone who is so vulnerable and open. I absolutely love that. She's kind of an inspiration to me and I think you'd really love her channel. Now I'm excited to share my 10 tips for looking younger with you, but first if you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll go ahead and subscribe and click that little bell. That will just notify you of my future anti-aging and skincare videos. Okay, let's get down to this. Now the first tip involves getting younger looking skin. And the way I do that is with primers because being my age, and I won't tell you my age today, but it's well over 50, I have large pores, I have fine lines and wrinkles, I just have kind of a crepey looking texture to parts of my skin, and I really like to even all that out. And the way to do that is with a good foundation primer. Now my favorite primer for me is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer, the pore minimizing version, and this is absolutely fabulous. I just use a little bit of this at the first of my makeup in my T-zone areas primarily where I have the large pores. If you have large pores and you want your makeup to last, this is a fabulous primer. And the other two primers I'm going to show you are also Smashbox primers, and I am not sponsored by Smashbox. Nobody sent me these products free, but I've tried probably 15 different primers, and really I love the Smashbox brand because I think they have an excellent primer. Now the second primer that I use is this little Smashbox Photo Finish Primer and it's the Color Correcting Adjust Primer in green and this is wonderful if you have redness on your skin. So for those mornings that I wake up and I look a little ruddy, I just put this around my T-zone areas or wherever I have redness, especially my nose and around this area, and it really nulls out the red. And another primer that's just great if you're not particularly caring about large pores is the Smashbox Original Primer. This is the first one they came out with. It's kind of an iconic primer and it really does work to give you that smooth, even textured, younger looking skin. Now my second tip is to use a peach corrector stick. And as we get on the other side of 50, this little baby is our best friend. What this does is it cancels out black marks. The peach does that with any dark blue or black marks on your skin. So the places that I use this are under eye circles and also in that little inner corner there, it almost looks like I've got dark blue stains on either side of my nose right here. And this peach primer just absolutely cancels that out right immediately. And if you're concerned about dark circles, you don't put this all over the circle because that would just bring it forward and emphasize it. You just put it in the part of the circle that is dark, just the little lines, and usually they're little crescent shaped lines. It absolutely brings those areas forward and cancels out your baggy eyes. Now my next youthful makeup tip is to pay attention to your brows. And as many of you know who've been following my channel, I did not do that. I had very thick brows, and so over the years I just kind of got used to ignoring my brows. And then all of a sudden I realized that I wasn't getting any arch in my brows at all and one of my wonderful viewers pointed out it was because I had lost my tails and I keep talking about this but it's just amazing to me that I couldn't see how I looked and a viewer did point it out to me which I was glad about so now I use a brow pencil to fill in those tails to actually create tails on the end today I have on this elf brow pencil and it's in the color taupe absolutely a great little color and here's the one end which is the pencil and on the other end is this little spoolie that you use to just brush your brows into place. And then I set my brows with either hairspray or a setting gel. Another brow pencil that I've been using lately is this IT Cosmetics Brow Power Pencil. And this is in the color Universal Taupe, and it really is a universal color. I don't know how they manage that, but it works on all eyebrow colors, apparently. And another thing that I do on my eyebrows is that I bring them in a little bit closer to my nose because that apparently decreases the width of your nose and just gives you a younger look. Now, tip number four is to get some sparkle on your eyelids. And I know this might surprise you because I spent a lot of my first year on YouTube singing the praises of matte eyeshadows. And that was because I'd gone way too far overboard with shimmery shadows. Before I came to YouTube, it would not be unusual for me to put a bright blue sparkly eyeshadow all over my lids. Now I don't do that. That was a little too extreme. So I had to go to the mattes to kind of break myself of that habit. And still the majority of my eye makeup is matte, 
but I always like to add a little shimmer either with a little bit of a shimmery shadow on the lid or I've been using this Maybelline Color Tattoo 24 hour crayon in the color Barely Beige and all you do is you just take this and just put a little bit of color on the middle part of your lid and kind of tap it in and it just gives you that little bit of youthful sparkle. Now tip number five is to use a cream liner in your waterline and this is an absolutely fabulous one. This is the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlighter but I use it on my waterline and in fact I have it on my waterline now and as you can see it's not really a white it's more of a creamy pink color and the reason I like this one is number one it opens up your eyes it makes you look less tired and it makes your eyes look a little bit bigger because the optical illusion is that the white waterline kind of blends with the whites in your eyes and makes your eyes look bigger and more open. And I absolutely love this particular water liner, this one by Wet n Wild. It's very inexpensive, but more than that, it stays on your eyes. And in fact, it is about 3.30 and I applied my makeup this morning before work at about 6.30, maybe 7.00. And as you can see, you can still see the waterline liner. And I have never tried another waterliner, even very high-end ones. I had an Anastasia one that I used, but it does not compete with this in terms of wearability. This is a great one. Now, tip number six is to get rid of the black eyeliner. And I know that sounds really strange, because I spent a lot of the last year, at least the first part of it, wearing a lot of black eyeliner, and I thought it was dramatic, and it is dramatic, and I suppose if you have very dark hair, you can maybe handle it, but I think as we get older, I think we need to lighten up on some things and certainly lighten up the harsh colors. Now, I don't use black eyeliners. Maybe occasionally at night I will, but when I was wearing the black eyeliner, I noticed that it gave me very harsh lines around my eyes, and it also tended to close in my eyes and make them look smaller. So I switched to using the brown, and you don't have to use brown. You can use plum or navy as good as well, just anything but black. And I also largely use the pencil eyeliner now as opposed to the liquids that I was using, although that's this month. I'm, I may go back. I kind of like the liquid liners. But I use the eyeliner just along the top of the line, and I put the little pencil eyeliner on there, and this is a great one. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Smoldering Eyeliner. It's an absolutely wonderful brown shade. So I will apply this and then use a little pencil brush to go over it and smudge it out a little bit. Since switching to the brown eyeliner, maybe my eyes don't look as dramatic, but they certainly do look younger. Now tip number seven is a simple one, and maybe it's very obvious to some of you, but the tip is to curl your eyelashes every day. There is not a morning that I leave the house with makeup on that I have not curled my eyelashes because I've noticed that curling the lashes opens up your eyes and makes your eyes look bigger and younger. Now tip number eight as we get older is to change your blush application. And this tip comes from hard experience of seeing myself on a video recently when I realized that, oh my gosh, I look like a clown. I favor blushes that look like this. In fact, this is one of my favorite blushes and it is absolutely beautiful. I love this fuchsia pink color, but sometimes when I wear this, if I'm not very careful, I end up with a huge splotch of color on my cheeks. I don't want to be the woman who has aging old skin and then big round dollops of red blush. And that's exactly how I looked in a video recently and you all were so kind because you didn't mention it. So if you're going to use a blush like this, make sure you apply it very sparingly. But to be on the safe side, it is probably better as we get older to switch to blushes that look a little more natural, a little bit more like this one. This happens to be the Parti blush from Tarte and the Tarte blushes are very good. However, they're very highly pigmented. So make sure when you apply that you really tap off that brush because it's very easy with these pigmented blushes to get that big circle apple look on your cheeks, which you don't want. So these colors, which are a little more boring looking in the pan, actually look pretty good on our cheeks and give us a more natural look. And I always like to pair that with a little bit of a glow. And how I get the glow is this Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. And this costs like $5. It's amazingly inexpensive. And I have a ton of different highlighters on my makeup table. And I always come back to this when I want something that's just quick and easy to apply with no danger of really over applying. I'll go ahead and put a little bit on. I actually already have some on, but this is such a gentle highlighter and it blends in so well that it's really not gonna be a problem to over apply. And that is certainly not true of some highlighters. <laughs> some highlighters are like strobe lights on your cheeks, and this is not one of those. Very, very natural. In fact, I'll put a little down my nose. Might as well. A little on the cupid's bow. But see, that just gives you a wonderful little glow. Very, very natural. 
and I think everyone should really have this particular highlighter because it's so effort-free and just gives you that youthful glow. Now, tip number nine will surprise you because it involves contour. And as many of you know, I've been learning contour over my first year on YouTube. And sometimes I walk around with brown patches under my cheeks, which I really don't like. But I think contour is very, very important as we age because as we get older or more grown up, our faces tend to fall and we lose the definition under our cheekbones. So it really helps to add a little bit of contour. And this is one of my favorite ones. This is the Smashbox Contour Palette. And this is probably the first contour palette I ever bought when I came to YouTube. And I remember, I think it was $30 or so. And, and that just killed me to spend that kind of money when I started YouTube because I was such a drugstore makeup girl. But I absolutely love this little palette. Very, very neutral shades of contour very neutral. You really can't go wrong with this. It's very, very simple and easy. And there's a beautiful little highlighter that comes with it. It even comes with instructions if you're new at the highlighter and contour thing. Really do think it helps to put a little bit of contour under here, stopping here, not coming any lower, just a little bit of contour there, a little bit along the jawline to define the jaw, a little bit underneath the jaw, as if you've got a nice shadow there because your chin is so wonderful and defined. Now, tip number 10 is to lighten up on your lipstick. And friends, I have been having to learn this lesson on camera here on YouTube because in my first half, I was very attracted to burgundy lipsticks and brown lipsticks and even red lipsticks. But in my second half, those dark colored lipsticks are really too harsh for me. Dark colors are aging because the darker lipsticks make our lips recede, which makes our lips look smaller. And also those darker colors easily travel into the the fine lines around our mouth. And the lighter colors just make our lips look a little bit larger and plumper. And sometimes it helps to take a little bit of gloss and just put it right in the middle of that lower lip. A little bit of gloss in the center of our lower lip just makes our lips look larger and plumper. And that little bit of shine just helps our lips look more moist and youthful. Now I have a bonus tip for you and it doesn't involve makeup, but it involves hair. And the tip I have is that as we get more grown up, we need to stay current on our hairstyle. And that doesn't always mean cutting off your hair. I mean, look at Christy Brinkley and how wonderful she looks and she's in her mid sixties, I think. But to dramatically show you the difference that short hair can make, I'm going to cut off my hair for you. So to show you how I'd look in short hair, I cut my hair. What a sacrifice to make for my YouTube channel. No, actually it's a wig. I guess you probably knew that. But this is actually the Lisa wig from Uniwigs. This is a great wig, I have to say. It's absolutely darling. It's really just kind of cute and flirty and fun. I'll show it to you in the back. Here it is. Isn't that cute? It's absolutely darling. Super easy to wear. And I have worn the Carrie Uniwig to work before and it is longer hair. So you think it would be more uncomfortable to wear, but it's very, very comfortable. I wore that wig all day, didn't have a problem with it. This is a wonderful wig and it's just cute and perky and fun and kind of has a modern young vibe to it. Well, those are my 10 tips to help you look younger. Some of them learned the hard way on my part, I have to admit. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe and click that little bell so you won't miss my future videos on skincare and makeup. Now, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and I'm going to be using the Life Loves You cards from Louise Hay. Let's go ahead and see what God has in store for us to think about today. Here's one. Wow, I like this. I love life and life loves me. I love life and life loves me. When you feel envy or lack, say to yourself, I love life and life loves me. Be in love with your own life. Let life bless you today. This is a wonderful card. And you know, in my first half, I was very guilty of this, of feeling maybe a little bit of envy when I saw the lives of others. And I have to say in my first half, I spent too much time on Facebook and Facebook just did nothing but kind of make me a little bit miserable, I have to admit. On Facebook, everyone posts these wonderful pictures of themselves on vacation or eating at fabulous restaurants or their kids absolutely perfect. And those Facebook moments are the best moments of our lives. What Facebook did for me is that I ended up comparing my life with all of its ups and downs and imperfections. I bought it that their lives were as great as they made them look. And so over time, I realized that it was just kind of making me unhappy spending so much time on Facebook. So in my second half, I made the decision to not go to Facebook so much. I mean, it is nice to find out, you know, what's going on in various people's lives. If I spend hours and hours on Facebook, I just end up not feeling very good about myself because naturally it makes us kind of compare our insides with everyone else's outsides. So from now on, let's march to the beat of our own drummer. Let's run our own race. Let's love the life we've been given and have a fabulous second half. Take care. See you next time.